On this episode of History Hunters, Jeff and Sarah check out Lovelock, Nevada, once called Big Meadow by pioneers migrating westward in the 1840s. They'll also revisit how the town was established when tracks were laid for the Transcontinental Railroad. We'll also visit the location where early Charlie Chaplin film co-star Edna Purviens grew up and the site of the hotel where Amelia Earhart spent the night in 1931 after making an emergency landing. the town of Lovelock, Nevada. This place was a key place for the travelers who were coming from the Midwest to California on the Hubble Trail. The pioneers liked to stop here because this place for three miles was solid green. It was called Big Meadows. It's a place where their oxen got to, to feed on the grass and they got to frolic on grass after traveling to the desert for many, many months. It took four to six months to get out here to California. This shows the trail. Ah, wow. So this is the Hastings cutoff that the Donner Party took that delayed them so much to come around the Ruby Mountains here. And they, they met here at, uh, somewhat west of Elko and continued on. And they went right through here. As you can see here is a stamp mill. In prior videos I told you about how stamp mills were used to crush ore. This was probably used here in Nevada somewhere. This wheel right here turned the stamps that went up and down and crushed the ore right underneath here. They use these ore cars over here to transport the ore to be crushed. A hoisting engine used in the mines. Look at this old ancient radiator here. Ore bucket. And here is an old wagon. Oh no. Hey, look. Is that cold? Is that cold? Yeah. Straight. This is on the National Register of Historic Places. This is the Pershing County Museum. Pershing County was named after General John Pershing, a World War I general. Became very famous. Had nothing to do with Nevada, but they named the entire county after him. It's an assay's office. Yeah, it's an assay office, but it looks like it could be the original that was probably trucked in here. It's got the metal siding on it. Got some old fashioned signs out on the side. In 1866, an English immigrant by the name of George Lovelock settled here, and he got 320 acres through squatter's rights. And when the Central Pacific Railroad was coming through here on its way to Promontory Point, Utah, where they met, the East and the West met, he decided that he was going to donate somewhat to like 85 acres to the railroad to have a town here. They named it originally Love Locks in his honor. A museum docent named Devoy Monk was hospitable when she happened to come by and open the museum for us. This is the 1960 Cadillac. It was, uh, you could ride in it and not feel them. And the story that goes with it is when we got ready to turn it in for a new one, they were going to trade it in for a new one, and the fire department hit it, stole it and hid it over at the mortuary for two years <laughs> so the county couldn't find it. Wow. And I, are we glad they didn't? <laughs> <laughs> this is the mining part. Okay. So, this is Rochester. Picture of Rochester. I'm um, over here too. And where's Rochester? Uh, up there. <laughs> Come look at the foot. Um, the foot Drill. Oh, Can yeah. you imagine if your dentist got tired? <laughs> and you know what? 
Oh, he and that's was, what you're sitting in? He was so horrible. Oh. <laughs> you go to that dentist and every time you get an infection. <laughs> this is George Lovelock right here, founder of Lovelock. That is cool. And then this is a daughter, Nellie Lovelock. I was told that this J.H. Bible Incorporated Groceries and Hardware banner. He was the father of U.S. Senator Allen Bible. Allen Bible was born in Lovelock in 1909. His father, Jacob Bible, was a grocery store owner and raised cattle outside of town. Allen became a lawyer and served in the U.S. Senate from 1954 to 1974. So that's an artifact from the Bible days, but not, not the biblical days. There's a difference. Jeff and Sarah drive out to the Lone Mountain Cemetery in search of the grave of town founder George Lovelock. So we decided to come out here to the Lone Mountain Cemetery and find the grave of George Lovelock, a guy who basically was one of the first pioneers in this area. And he homesteaded some 320 acres in like 18. 68. He was a miner. He was also a hotel operator. At one time he was the first proprietor of the Big Meadows Hotel on Main Street there in Lovelock. Somebody left some silk flowers for him. So George Lovelock was born in Wales in 1824 and he came out here and he died in 1907. His wife Mary is buried right over here. As you can see down here it says she's a native of England. She was 58 when she died on July 5th, 1881. Pretty cool little uh, bench type seat there that memorializes George Lovelock and his wife. Mentions that he's the founder of Lovelock, Nevada. I almost tripped over a little grave here. I'm not sure what that is. ML. This appears to be a very lonely cemetery out here. Hardly any vegetation at all. It's just sand and rock next to Lone Mountain over there. The town of Lovelock is straight over here. I cannot say for sure, but I would bet that there are some graves here. Some people who were journeying out trying to make it to California probably died in this area. William C. Riddell was just five or six when his parents, James and Parthenia Ruddell, crossed the plains in 1864 to Nevada by oxen team. It was a very difficult journey. A lot of people died on the way, had no medical care. They barely had enough to live on. Something over here has caught my eye. Native of the Azores. That's cool. She's lost her arm. Hey, look at that one's very like old looking. Sarah pointed to this one, Cooley. Wow. Man, if that's that old, that's that's lasted, but If the design of that courthouse looks familiar, it's because it's kind of modeled after the Thomas Jefferson Memorial and the University of Virginia Library that Thomas Jefferson designed himself. That dome and the building itself is what they were trying to achieve. Talks about this being only one round courthouse in daily use in the nation. So this courthouse is where Gerald Gallegos, the notorious mass murderer from California, was found guilty of murder. And he was a real sicko. He would kidnap girls in California, Nevada, and I think Oregon. He used them for sex slaves and then he ended up killing them. Well, he buried two girls from Sacramento, just outside of Unionville, close by. And he was arrested and he was tried here. He was so reviled by the public that when it was made known that there was this county and Pershing County didn't have enough money to try him, that uh, they started sending in money. And about $20,000 was sent towards the $60,000 expense of his trial. People hated him that much. Or you know what this is? Love locks. Yeah. Look at this. Guess what? I got a little one for us.
<laughs> we only have a little left. Where do you want to put it? Hmm. We're gonna have to put it on um, somebody else's lock, probably. No, we don't. We're on the chain. Should we put the date up or the name up? Our name up. Here it is. It's locked in now. It's official. It's official. We're love locked from the love lock. If you want to visit our lock, it's the first one here behind the courthouse. This town became famous when it was made known that O.J. Simpson was going to be released from the prison outside of town here. And there was some speculation as to whether or not he was going to locate here. That's obviously something that he would never do. He's in Las Vegas right now. There was a celebrated event that happened here in Lovelock in June of 1931. Amelia Earhart was hired to fly a beech nut autogyro. It was a autogyro was basically the beginning of a helicopter. It was part helicopter, part airplane. Her goal was to fly from coast to coast. Now, because she could only carry about two hours of fuel, she was forced to stop at little towns along the way. That morning, I believe it was June 5th, 1931, she made her way to Windover, then stopped at Elko, then hopped over to Battle Mountain, and then to Winnemucca. On her way here to Lovelock, she was forced by a dust storm to set down about 20 miles east of here. Somebody went and picked her up and brought her here. As you can imagine, her presence set off a flurry of activity and excitement. Some of the local townspeople were lucky enough to pose for photos with the auto gyro and Amelia Earhart. This railroad behind me was kind of the, the central part of town was Broadway over here. I think it's been renamed. But right over here is where Amelia Earhart spent the night. There was a hotel over here named Pershing Hotel. It was a brick hotel. And right where this truck is, that's where the hotel was. Virtually nobody knows that Amelia Earhart spent the night here. She wasn't intending to spend the night here. She was intending to go on to Reno, Nevada. The second story had a commanding view of all the historical railroad front over here. And as you can see, the depot was over here. I read conflicting reports about which hotel Earhart actually stayed in. One local reported that she stayed in the Big Meadows Hotel. The other was quite sure that it was the Pershing Hotel. But both hotels were within a block of each other, however. The museum that we just visited has a panoramic picture of this street over here, and it shows Central Hotel over here. Every town across the country seems to have famous people that come from it. And this town, Lovelock, Nevada, has Edna Purviance, who was Charlie Chaplin's love interest and leading lady in about 33 films. Well, I found out that she lived right here on this block. This was a grocery store back in the early 1900s when Edna Provias lived right over there on that corner. Her house is now gone. She grew up here. She was actually born in Paradise Valley, closer towards Winnemucca. And her father brought her here at the age of three. Her parents divorced. Her mother married a man by the name of Nurberger, who was a local plumber here in Lovelock. And he had a plumbing store in the back of this Right here was Central, Central Lodging was here. It was a cafe. It was a place where people could stay. And I believe there was a saloon there as well. The house has been removed, unfortunately. So it would have been about right here where the doorway, the front doorway to the boarding house was. Unfortunately, it fell apart and became a fire trap. So it was torn down in the 1940s, I understand. 
Edna graduated from high school here in Lovelock in 1913, and she couldn't wait to get out of town, so she headed towards the Bay Area where her sister, sister Bessie lived. She decided to go to school to become a stenographer. But while she was having uh, lunch in a cafe one day, a young actor by the name of Charlie Chaplin came in and was giving her the eye. Apparently he had her called to the studio, s &A studio there in Niles, where they were filming a lot of Chaplin movies and he thought that she might be good for his pictures. Miss Provias was in a lot of his movies, at least 33 of them, and she's not a well-known name, but she was a very beautiful woman. Initially, Charlie thought that she was too serious of a person to actually act out comedic roles for him. towards this location where the plumbing shop was, where Edna provides his stepfather had a plumbing shop. And would you look at that? That's an old Model A over there. Jeez. Well, the plumbing shop would have been right in here. Edna and her mother frequently walked just around the corner from the boarding house on Sunday morning to attend services at the Methodist Church. This is the exact same church that Edna attended. Lovelock has no memorial to Edna Proviance, but 73 miles away in Winnemucca, the Humboldt County Museum honors her memory with a display that includes photos, a dress she wore, and a cigarette box. Here in the Humboldt County Museum is a dress worn by Edna Proviance. She was born close by here, 1896 in Paradise Valley. Some little Charlie Chaplin things down here. A cigarette box that was once owned by Edna Provides. And there she is on a movie poster. A Hollywood scandal helped to finish off Edna's career after she and Charlie parted ways in 1923. Edna found a new man in Cortland Dines. During an all-night of drinking for New Year's Eve 1924, friend and actress Mabel Normand joined in at Dines' apartment. When chauffeur Horace Greer arrived to pick up Miss Normand, an argument broke out between Dines and Greer. During a jealous rage, Greer shot Dines three times. Edna and Mabel were less than honest about what happened. He recovered from his injuries, but Edna and Mabel's career were destroyed. Edna retired from motion pictures and in 1938 married a Pan-American airline pilot named John Squire. She died of throat cancer in 1958 and is buried in Grandview Memorial Park in Glendale. I'm going to show you that there's still a lot of old buildings still around here. There are wood slats up here of old construction. This is a laundromat now, but at one time it was the ranch saloon seen here in this early photo. All of the saloons closed in 1918 because of prohibition. The club saloon sat here in the empty lot where I'm standing. It's been removed. This is the town's train station, and I understand its design is kind of unique. It has been relocated from where it was before. This explains that the Lovelock Depot was built in 1880 and renovated in 2002. It's on the National Register of Historic Places. It's closed today. We hope you enjoyed this visit to Lovelock, Nevada and that you learned a little bit about an interesting place that most people travel by without stopping. That's what History Hunters is all about. And as always, we'd appreciate more subscribers. Hit the like button below if you liked what you saw today and if you'd like to catch more.